Yeah. I'm either could be a Vietnamese and also Australian. Mm -hmm. I live in very much half fly here, half fly there. Mm. So I, I understand um, Vietnamese people, and I was when one of them when I first came to Australia, or right. either when I was thinking to go to overseas to study. Mm. So uh, don't get me wrong. The reason I went back mm. is more about where I'm going to, okay. not about why I left. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go back to Vietnam. If you ask me like what are the common mistakes mm -hmm. that people usually start have when they do this when they start a business here in Vietnam right. and uh, and they fail right. from that. Okay. Well at I'm still a, a young entrepreneur, mm -hmm. like since I got back to Vietnam recently. But from my knowledge and from my, my experience, um, Usually because they don't. Right, long. Yeah. Uh, what's your name? Let's get to it. Uh, my name is Justin. Justin. Last oh. name is Chow. So I was born in Vietnam, and I went to Australia when I was um 22 years old. I went there for studying. So I went to use the ETS. Um, uh, Sydney um, Uni of Technology mm -hmm. and I did studying in two majors, double majors, uh, accounting and finance. Okay. And then now I uh, finish uh, studying there and then I work and live in Sydney. You and I were, uh, how you say, students in the same... We went to school together, yeah. uh, Saigon Tech. It was a college, right? Uh, it was college. All right, we now still, it is a university. Still college. Still a college. Okay. All right, but it was the right time. Like uh, we spent a lot of time studying English. We did. We did. Right, and then after that, uh, our path just separated. Uh, you went to Australia, and I'm still in Ho Chi Minh City. And I uh, believe yes. Right. In 2012 mm -hmm. or 11, 11 or something. So how? And then we went to different career paths. How long have you been in Australia? So until today, that would be uh, 14 years. 14 years? 14 years. In Australia? In Australia. So I, I came to Australia in 2011 and I uh, went to the uni there. Okay. It's named um, UTS, um, uh, Sydney Technology um, University. So I study um, two majors, accounting and finance. I graduated um, in 2014, and after that, it was uh, it was such a a tough time for me to get the the visa to stay there forever. You mean the job? Uh, it's more like uh, uh, the immigration thing oh, with the okay. visa skill assessment. Mm -hmm. Well, I did studying accounting, so in order to get. Uh, the permanent resident visa in mm -hmm. Australia. I need to get uh, the English test, mm -hmm. which is the IELTS, so either Good. the BTE nowadays. Just and a then, quick uh, question, how much uh, score of the IELTS you got mm, at that time? At that time, I think we needed seven all right. in all bands. And you got seven? And I, I think, I believe I did <laughs> got seven a <laughs> long time ago. Uh, I did got like a, a bridging visa mm -hmm. and then temporary visa, mm -hmm. just a few visa before you finally got the the, the permanent one. It's a long way. It seems like to it be was very, a long. Uh, it wasn't that long at all compared to the other people. Okay, my ones was quite okay, quite okay. Two thousand sixteen, I got the PR and then um, what is the PR? A permanent resident visa. Okay. Sorry. And then um, I got a job mm -hmm. at the um, account insurance company. Mm -hmm. I was like a finance um, officer okay. to work in the finance department of that insurance company. Mm -hmm. That's a global insurance company. It's called AUB, uh, and it's located in North Sydney of Sydney, Australia. Nice. And I made yeah, quite a decent amount of money from that job. What do you do with that money? Okay, uh, well, I pay off my, my college mm -hmm. debt, uh, return some money back to my family That's since good. they spent a lot for me. 
and then save a lot of money as well. And then I bought the house, my first house, like my first property in Where? Sydney. Sydney. Okay. In Sydney. The biggest questions. Seems like you are doing very well in Australia, right? You uh, graduated, you uh, got a PR permanent residence, and you got a good job, and then you got a good investment. Mm. Then why you're in Vietnam now? Okay. What make you decide to uh, not continue to live in Australia, but coming back to Vietnam? Um, I wouldn't say I had a good job or mm. a good lifestyle there. I would say I have a decent job uh -huh. and a decent lifestyle. So the thing is, I've been away from Vietnam for many years, mm -hmm. 14 years in total. Right. And uh, it just, um, it just want to change a little bit, a little bit of the environment um, that I've been through for so long. I always live in Sydney and never went anywhere else in mm -hmm. Australia for, for a living visit yet but uh, it's always in Sydney and I found Sydney is a bit um, it's still a beautiful city but it's quite a bit chaos mm -hmm. it's uh, competitive mm -hmm. and uh, the lifestyle is a bit more you know like pushy uh -huh. and um, in order to to live well there you needed to make more better efforts okay. in yourself Hmm. Than, than anywhere else in the, or in Australia particularly hmm. like Melbourne or Brisbane that's how Sydney is Are you trying to say even though you have a good quality of life hmm. and let's say good, good job and good lifestyle but somehow you're not really feeling happy over there hmm. Oh, well, um, I, I am happy. <laughs> I, I'm grateful mm -hmm. for what I, I achieved or what I have been through in Sydney. It's having its ups and downs. Okay. Yes. But um, overall, I, I, I appreciate what I had for those 14 years in mm. Sydney. So uh, don't get me wrong, the reason I went back. Mm, it's more about where I'm going to, okay. not about why I left. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go back to Vietnam because I can see now Vietnam is de developing. It's growing stronger and quicker than 10 years ago compared to uh, where I was when okay. I left. Uh, I can see myself could do more things in Vietnam than Sydney. Uh, I see myself could be uh, more productive, mm -hmm. I could be more controlled mm. as what I'm doing. Mm. The opp opportunities is everywhere actually, it doesn't matter where you are, it's just how you see the things. Okay. But still, uh, I would say at the advantages of one student who went to overseas to study and study for many years, mm -hmm. I could bring a lot of mindsets, mm. the, the ideas, the opinions that I have got from Sydney, bring it back to Vietnam, and then uh, use that and apply that to the current environment, and and hope that I could change something from what Vietnam is doing, and make it better in right. my own ways. As someone who has experienced both world, let's say developed country like Australia and mm. developing country like Vietnam. Mm. Um, do you think it's becoming a more business friendly environment uh, in Vietnam comparing to uh, other countries? Well, the thing is, Vietnam is a developing country. Mm -hmm. We have sources. We have a lot of things that haven't been touched or right. explored yet. So. I would say it's just because now it's more chances mm. and it's just still things there for us to do right. than to develop countries. Right. It's already been set and mm -hmm. built there for many years ago. So uh, now it's more like your point of view. So if you can see things and you can see that could grow and that, that's a chance for you right. to, to catch it. Excellent. Uh, I also heard a lot of sharing from other foreigners mm. when it comes to Vietnam to uh, start a business here. They, 
most of them are from uh, you know um, Taiwan, mm. like uh, from uh, South Korea, South Korea, China, not China, but not uh, China, okay, from the states, USA, mm. okay. So Why those are the that? developed countries, and mm. they always saying the same thing that in the developed countries, everything has been developed. Mm. So the competition is very high. Mm. Like even though they have the idea, but uh, that idea already exists uh, on the market yep. uh, at a certain level, mm. and they always have to compete in order to get to the top ladder. Mm. So in Vietnam, uh, since like we are still the developing country and those ideas, when they print from their old country to Vietnam, it becomes a new idea. And yep. it's still, the competition level is still low for them. It's to, more doable Yeah, when you bring the ideas here. It's not that people don't know that ideas yet. Mm -hmm. It just, it won't apply in their own countries. Right. When you bring them here, it's more about the people, the, the human sources, mm -hmm. the, the labors, right. and the environment. And mm -hmm. still everything is raw and, and it's not been, um, you know, like uh, digged or, or, uh, or explored yet. Right. And that's why that idea is, is more you know, applicable in mm -hmm. our country. Uh, the next question I'm going to uh, ask you will be, um, if there's something you do in order to uh, start a business in mm. Vietnam as complete failure, mm. like what are the things you do to make it like a failed business? Like that, people can stay away and avoid from those, uh, you know, experience and uh, become, uh, can have a better start. What you, so you asking me like, what are the common mistakes mm -hmm. that people usually Start have a business right. when they do this when they start a business here in Vietnam, right? And uh, and they fail right. from that, okay. Well, and I'm still a, a young entrepreneur, mm -hmm. like since I got back to Vietnam recently. But from my knowledge and from my, my experience, um, usually because they don't understand the Vietnamese culture, mm. it, it could work from the books. Mm -hmm. But it's not work like in theory, yes, but not it's not gonna be working in reality because Vietnamese culture is different. Vietnamese people are different. Uh, our perspective are different. So in order to make that product to be succeed, mm. so you need to understand more about Vietnamese, the way you marketing it, mm -hmm. the way you, you advertise it, the way you promote it has to be, you know, like um it's more like um, you know, the more you understand the people, the more the products could reach out to the people easier. Right. And then I think that's one of the common mistakes that usually the, the overseas, like the foreigners, usually make. Mm -hmm. Because they think that um, if that product is well known and being used and being uh, produced a lot, from overseas. Mm, in their own country? In their own countries, yeah. For example, like McDonald's. Okay. I, as my knowledge, I, I, I think that hasn't, it hasn't been that successful mm. in Vietnam compared to the other countries. Right. So, uh, I don't know the way, I think McDonald's is one of the biggest companies in the world, mm -hmm. but I don't think they, they fail in the marketing or anything. It just maybe, in the Vietnamese culture again, um, it's just the way they, 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 they how to say, they interface mm -hmm. with McDonald's, different mm -hmm. with the other the countries. Right, mm. correct. Uh, if uh, three things you can uh, share mm. uh, with the, um, uh, the, the next, like uh, with the entrepreneurs, like uh, who had the ideas to uh, start a business in Vietnam, mm. Uh, before they start, mm. what are the three things they uh, should think about or prepare? You mean like a young startup and they not Vietnamese? Any age, you know, as long as they have an idea to start a business in Vietnam, mm. they, can be, they, can, they can be a successful business uh, in their own country. Mm. But when they first come to Vietnam and start a business, uh, 
Now, would I recommend them? Right. Um, well, my advice would be um, from whoever, like, come from any countries, mm -hmm. e even if from Vietnam right. themselves. First of all, uh, understand the culture, understand the people. Second, I would say locations. Location, mm. location are important. You need to know where you go and is that location has been, you know, like explored yet? Mm -hmm. Is it growing yet? Uh, and the last one, politics. You need to politics. check wow. with the politics. You know, the way we work, the way we deal with things here is different than the other, and then the other countries. So politics. And some of the, and I know even like the politics could change a whole lot of your projects mm -hmm. from, from uh, like day by day, you know, the news and everything. So be careful with that as well. And uh, either you want to invest or do anything inside Vietnam, uh, try, try to, to be with the, like um, a good organizer. Mm -hmm a good investor, the one who could guide you to, to the right products. Spend a bit of money for them, yes, uh, I don't mind, but as long as they are helpful, mm -hmm. they're effective. Right. And uh, it could save me a lot from all the troubles, you right. know, from politics, from, from location, and everything I mentioned before, and also with Vietnamese culture. Mm -hmm. They would know the best because they are locals. All right. Mm. Uh, thank you a lot for your sharings and uh, if any one of you would like to have more insights about how to set up a business as a foreigners or as a locals, like uh, you can contact us or if, if you like this clip, you can just press the like button or leave a comment below and we will be happy to reply to you and uh, hope you enjoy the clip. See you next time. See you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you. So let's get back to the business you are doing in Vietnam. Mm. Uh, like English teaching is a part of that, and then bringing people overseas mm. to uh, to study abroad mm. is another part. Can you tell us a little bit about the specific challenges or obstacles you face when you are currently set up your, the business here? Is With it about the, the education consultancy that I've been running? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, it's a lot of opportunities, yes. It's still a lot of competitive, mm -hmm. a lot of agencies that have already been uh, up and run in Ho Chi Minh City. Right. Uh, well, but competitive is always in the business anyway. We can't avoid that. But one of the things that we've been struggling to face uh, is uh, scams. Scams? Yeah. Right. Like um, with the Vietnam uh, market, um, in in all the foreign countries, mm -hmm. in terms of the education and in, in terms of the uh, uh, working visa, mm -hmm. we we did uh, quite a few you know bad things right, in right. The history, few dodgy things that make and affect the market a lot. Right. So in order to gain the credits back from the immigration of all the the countries that we plan to send the students um, out. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure all the profile is good to build back the portfolios of Vietnam image mm. in their eyes right. and to make everything more genuine that we're just there to study, mm. we're just there to work and we're just there to make money. All right. and, and if yes, if we have a better chance to be there, to stay there forever, yes, we take it. Other than that, we would love to be there just for our knowledge, mm. you know, gain some and then we bring them back to our own country and we, 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 uh, we start, we start everything from here. Right. Uh, excellent. It just, um, it's not that big a deal like before when you have to go to study overseas. Now it's just more like an opportunity for you to go. If it's yes, if it's a good thing, you could learn something from that. And even if not a good thing there, you still learn something from it. Right.